let us pray our dear heavenly father we want to appreciate you tonight we want to give you thanks lord jesus for your blessings on us since the beginning of the week thank you lord jesus for how you spared our lives and preserved us even to this moment we are so grateful unto you lord jesus we say be thy exalted in the name of jesus christ Thank you, Lord Jesus, for our brethren that traveled. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for joining mercies you granted unto them. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for frustrating all the plans of the enemy against us. And thank you, Lord Father, for not giving us over unto the will of the adversary. Thank you for your faithfulness, Lord Jesus, keeping your word concerning us. Provisions in diverse ways meeting our needs, giving us food to eat and water to drink. Lord, we don't take this for granted. We know it's by your mercy and your mercy alone. And we say, blessed be your holy name, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the song service. We ask, Lord, that the offerings of our lips and that of our pockets will be acceptable unto you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, blessed Heavenly Father. As we open your word to read, Lord, we ask that your blessings will be upon the same. We also ask tonight, Lord, that you be the one that will speak to us again in the name of Jesus Christ. May this, Lord, atmosphere be saturated, Lord, with your spirit. Lord, may you move from seat to seat, Lord, and minister unto each and every one of us. No doubt, Lord, there are needs that are represented here tonight. Even those that are listening in, Lord, Father, connected on the internet, and those that will listen, Lord, to the tapes later. Whatever may be the need of your people, are the going forth of your word? Lord, may such needs be met in the name of Jesus Christ. May hopelessness give way to hope. Lord, may despair give way to encouragement. May worry, Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, give way, Lord Jesus, to clarity of mind in the name of Jesus Christ. May sickness give way to health. May poverty give way, Lord, to provisions. Lord, may sin give way to a righteous and holy living. Thank you, Father, because you've done it. Blessed be your name, Lord. We ask these things, Lord, with faith and thanksgiving. In Jesus Christ's name we are prayed. Amen. God bless you. You're welcome to again to church tonight. Before we have our seat, let's sing from, um, I think that should be 69. Open my eyes that I may see. 69.
11 we read from verse 7 to 10 then we will read from the book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 18 to 24 Romans 11 7 to 10 alright I read what then Israel had not obtained that which he seeketh for, for the election had obtained it, and the rest were blinded. According as it is written, God had given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. And David said, Let their table be made a snare, and a trap, a stopping block and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down their back always. I say right that's verse 10. Alright, let's read Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians 4 Verse 18 to 24. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness, to walk all uncleanliness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ, if so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt, according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created, in righteousness and true holiness. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. God bless you. Be seated. While we are seated, I would like to read from Romans chapter 12. I'll read verse 1 and verse 2. Please, can I have the fan off, please? Thank you. It said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, only acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. 
that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading and hearing of his holy and precious word. Amen. God bless you all. You are welcome to church again this evening. I believe that God has been gracious to us today and the week has been wonderful. Amen. We want to continue from where we stopped last Wednesday. We were talking about the danger of ignorance. Right? And um, the Lord helped us last week. And um, I just want us to look at um, one or two things again tonight as the Lord will help us. And um, okay. Uh, we will continue reading from that um, fundamental foundation for faith. And before then, I would like us to define um, the word ignorance again according to the dictionary meaning that I have here. He said, ignorance is the state or fact of being ignorant, lack of knowledge, learning, and information. Okay. Now, we have read in the book of um, Ephesians, uh, yes, Ephesians. We are going to link it up later with where we are reading from the fundamental foundation for faith. And um, after which we will still talk about how to overcome ignorance. But for now, let's just still follow it the way we are following now. Okay. Now, last week we were talking about um, the intention of God for man. The reason why God created man. Amen. And we're talking about some of the things that man could do. Okay. And one of the ignorance, one of the ways in, in which ignorance can manifest itself, it um, um, one can be ignorant of who he is and what he is actually supposed to be. And that's one of the things we're actually looking at from this um, sermon that the prophet preached, um, the fundamental foundation for faith. Okay. Let me just let just continue reading before I get to where I want to get to tonight. Now, Brother Bram said here, we will start reading from the later part of um, paragraph 9. Um, okay, no, not paragraph 9. Let's, yeah, paragraph 9. Brother Bram said, man was made as a secondary god on earth. He was given the power to control all things, all elements of the earth. That was Adam. Adam was given these great powers, but then the power that he was given to make himself is where he fell. And Adam could speak to the winds and it will stop. He could speak to the trees and they will obey him. He could speak to wildlife, it will obey him. He could speak to the waters, ever what it was, everything obeyed Adam. You believe that? Say amen. Everything he does, everything obeyed Adam. All right. Now, that is the beginning of man. That is what God gave him power over. Everything on earth. Now, through the fall, he lost that power. Then he became unconscious of the fact. After losing his relationship and friendship, fellowship with the Father, then he lost that. And all his great channels became clogged up and he couldn't get through. Now, I want to dwell here for a while. Now, Brother Brown made us to know that this was what man was at the beginning. Are you following, friends? Now, something happened to man. When man fell, man became unconscious. That is, man suffered a memory loss of who he was and what he was created to do. I don't know maybe we'll have heard about people that suffered um, um, I think they call it concussion when somebody hits his head against something I've heard about people that had accidents and uh, maybe they hit their head against something and they suffered memory loss some is partial memory loss some is permanent memory loss now a man that is suffering from memory loss he will forget his name he will forget who he is he will forget who his father is, who his mother is, whether he is married or not, he won't remember. He can't remember nothing. In fact, his brain is like that of a brand new baby. Are you following? If he was a rich man, he can't remember. He will forget everything completely. 
It's a pitiful, it's a, it's a pitiable state. I think I've read about a man before that they said he had an accident, and after the accident, um, they rescued him somewhere. <clears throat> he can't even remember where he lives. He can't remember his name. Are you following? He can't remember nothing about himself. This was the condition of man when man fell. Man lost a total consciousness of what he was even before. Something new happened to man the minute man fell. I think let's go back to Genesis. Let's read Genesis 3. You will understand something there. What man had not experienced before, man started experiencing it. Situations that was not, or languages or words that were not in the dictionary of man before came in immediately. In fact, Adam started forming new words that were not in existence before. We'll see one of them, one of that in Genesis 3. Let's quickly open to Genesis 3. Genesis chapter 3. Um, because of time, let's read from, um, let's read from verse 7. Genesis 3, 7. And it says, and the eyes of them both were opened and they knew they, that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden before they, didn't, they were not hiding themselves but something happened they started hiding alright um, and the Lord called verse 9 and the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him where art thou and he said I heard thy voice in the garden and I was afraid did you get that before there was no fear but suddenly something happened to him something new is, has been introduced into the life of man which was what fear he said, I was afraid because I was naked and I eat myself. Before, he didn't know he was naked. Nakedness was not a word that he was familiar with. Fear was not a word that he was familiar with. But now, something new had happened to him because why? He has lost the consciousness of what he was before. A new consciousness had happened. A new what? He's now living in a new reality. <laughs> a reality of fear. A reality of doubt. A reality of unbelief. A reality of sin. A reality of failure. Because why? He has lost the consciousness of what he was before. Amber Abraham told us that ignorance can be generational. I will show you why he said that. He talked about Africans and Indians. How from their forefathers, he said they were ignorant. He said they cannot embetter themselves. He said they had a lot of resources. He said, but they don't have enough intelligence. And it's still happening. To improve on themselves. That will bring us back to what we said there some time ago. And some people took offense. <laughs> when we were talking about um, slothfulness and we actually read the scripture you know I said if you remember then you know somebody said ah bro Joe is calling everybody bro, bro, bro Joe said people are calling people lazy I'm not the one that said people are lazy yo. I said our concept of world sometimes is different from what the bible meant and I gave an example I said a man that a hunter we all know who a hunter is children do you know who a hunter is carries his gun or machete or spear or whatever it is and goes into the forest to hunt throughout the night. Is that man a lazy man? Is that man a lazy man? We will say the man is not lazy. And I told you, I said, the word slothful is worse. It's other in application than lazy. I said, when we are growing up, if my dad calls you slothful, that's the way he calls it, he will use both the English one and the Yoruba one, you will be sorry for yourself. When they call one Imele, <laughs> you you will feel sorry, and if 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 you call that maybe to any of my siblings, I will even feel sorry for that person. Are you following what I'm trying to say? 
But you look at that kind of person, you won't think that the person is, you believe that a hunter is an hardworking person. But the Bible said, a man that will go to hunt and bring what he has, the game that he has caught or he has shot and sells it without roasting it, he said that man is slothful. Should we read that scripture? Please, brother Victor, I beg, look for that scripture for me. I think, um, I can't remember where. I know it's somewhere in Proverbs. Are you following? Meaning that he couldn't add value to what? To what he has in his hands. That means he's going to sell it cheap. Are you following, friends? And that is the condition of Africa, mostly. We have crude oil. We sell crude oil cheap. I will go and buy refined product expensive. We have cocoa. Isn't it? We sell the raw cocoa cheap. And you go and import chocolate. And all the other things that comes with it. Are you following what I'm trying to say, friends? We have rubber. We can process it. We will sell it cheap. Thank you very much, my brother. Um, okay, let's read the scripture. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 27. It says, The slothful man roasted not that which he took in hunting. Now, me talk. Him. <laughs> the what? But we say the man is hardworking. He went into the forest all night and he caught an antelope. And by the time he come out from the bush in the, the following morning, he sells it there. He stays on the roadside begging people to buy. He will be begging people to buy. They will be pricing him. Maybe they started pricing from 10,000. By the time he's getting to 11 o'clock and he's not getting a buyer, he will reduce the price to what? Maybe 8,000. By the time he's getting to noon, he's not getting a buyer, he will reduce to five. Eventually, he must sell it for 1,000. Because why? Time is going and that thing can be spoiled in his hands. But if he takes it home and roasts it, even if he doesn't sell it that day, he can sell it the next day. And he will add more price to it. He will add more money to it because he had improved on the value of that. He has added value to it. And Brother Brahmi also understand that that is actually the condition of Africans and Indians. He said they lack intelligence. To improve on themselves. You want that quote, I'll give it to you. Because the way some of you are looking at me. It's because of time. It's there. It is there. <laughs> Before you accuse me again that um, he has called he called us lazy. I'm talking to myself too. We're all here. <laughs> I didn't plan to talk about this tonight. Though. I don't know how why he came in. I'm coming. I hope it's this one. Now listen, he said, it's pitiful and they eat just that much food every two or three days. No matter if it was rotten out of the coconut oil or whatever it is, it can live. And now you can imagine what it is. They got natural resources, but not the mentality to develop what they've got. I will give you the reference. I just read from Hear Ye Him 570105, um, paragraph 121. I read it again. <laughs> he said, Is, He said, Hear Ye Him 570105, paragraph 121. He said, oh, it's pitiful. And they eat just that much food every two or three days. No matter if it was rotten out of a coconut oil or whatever it is, it can live. And now you, sorry, and now you can imagine what it is. They got natural resources. Is that correct or not? Even the prophet acknowledged that we have what? Natural resources. He said, but not the mentality to develop what they've got. Let me just even finish it. Old man sitting there by this little old place there with a mud puddle, his wife washing in the mud puddle, 
And if you want something for water to drink, it drinks out of the mud puddle. If he wants to cook, he takes the same place where his wife washed. Take, but my brethren, listen, that was a small thing when one day he is now bringing back to Adam's race and the condition of our ignorance. The condition of human ignorance is worse than what Abraham just described about Africans and Indians. He said, Adam's race was backed into the corner. God has sent them the law. They didn't keep it. God sent them prophets. They stoned them and made fun of them. They sent them to judges. And they sent them judges. They, couldn't, they wouldn't let them rule over them. Every hope had been lost. And Adam's race with sin, sickness, and diseases, illiteracy, and all was back into a corner. And the devil with his unmatching army of diseases, sin was whipping Adam's race down just as fast as he could. And there was one stepped out of heaven. He said, this day I'm going to earth. The angel said, what will you do? He said, I must give my life for Adam's race. He didn't have to do it, but he was willing to do it because there was no other hope left. No one else could do it. He didn't hesitate. He stepped out and took the sinner's place. When he was on the earth, he looked and seen where the greatest dread that man had, where the thickest of the spear was, it was dead. Every man is afraid to die. And he raised his precious hand to the heavens and struck at the very hardest part and the worst enemy that man has. And he plunged the spear of death into his precious bosom. And then he sent back on the day of Pentecost to Adam's fallen race, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, saying, Take up this and do the best you can to fight away ignorance. Oh, you are not showing it. And you see, when Christ came, he gave the Holy Ghost to fight what? That's what the prophet said. I will read it again. He said, Uh, and he de- and then he sent back on the day of Pentecost to Adam's fallen race the baptism of the Holy Ghost saying take up this and do the best you can to fight away ignorance and superstitions sin and sickness men who claim to have kissed the rim of the cup of God's blessings he said how can we hold our peace in such a time when God has given us the most powerful weapon that man ever plays, that man ever has in his hands to fight against sin and sicknesses, and he, he repeated again, and ignorance and superstitions and isms, is a real sky full of genuine baptism of the Holy Spirit, and we stand in the corner like a bunch of cowards. I'm not the one that's calling you cowards. It's the word that's saying it. God wants men and women who are gallant, who will stand out and take the place. God wants a hero. Could you be one? May we be one. So as you were saying, so, um, is the issue of um, slothfulness, Brabham was still saying, he said, some of these things can be generational. It can pass from, it's a mentality. It can pass from generation to generation. That is why the Bible said, as a man thinks in his heart, so he is. For your life to change, the first thing that needs to change is what? Your thinking. Until your thinking changes, your situation will remain the same. Ignorance actually is also a thinking. Are you following friends? That is why we, when we talk about how to overcome ignorance, we are going to talk about it. That's why we should always be connected to the source of life. Because why? When you are cut off or alienated from the source of life, you will live in ignorance. Now, look at what Brabham says here. He said, after losing his relationship, lo- lost his friendship, and lost his fellowship with the Father, that means that the connection between them was cut off. And from that time, what came up, what came up it was blackness. Their minds became darkened. Are you following, friends? And, of course, death also has its own attributes. Of course, when something is dead, the next thing, what, do you, what, what happens next? There will be a decay. Rottenness will come. My God will become, start coming up. It's, see, the, the moment something is dead, expect those things. That is why 
A sinner will be a sinner because by nature is a sinner. Why do you have to criticize somebody that is a sinner? He's a sinner. He can't help himself. He will always sin. That is his nature. You can help a dead body from producing maggots and corruption. That is his state. Until he comes back to life, don't expect anything better. Are you following, friends? And we are not in the same position as them. Because why? Our eyes of understanding had been opened. And if truly our eyes of understanding had been opened, then our life must be in accordance with somebody that is alive. Are you following, friends? So, Adam lost his relationship, lost his friendship, lost his fellowship with the father, then, after he lost that, he said all his great channels became clogged up and he couldn't get through. He said, but now, what Adam was in God, Christ has redeemed us back to that. Just hold on, before we get to that. Now listen. You know, we said um, ignorance can be generational. The moment Adam fell, Every generation that came thereafter, they were getting further and further and further away from God. Are you following, friends? The Bible talked about Adam being created in the image of God. Oh God. Let's read. Let's read Genesis. Genesis 5. Genesis 5. I think it's Genesis 5. Um, Genesis 5. All right. Let's see something there. We remember we read Genesis 1 last week. Genesis 1, um, 26 to 28. God, the intention of God, he said, let's God create man in our own image and after our likeness. Isn't it? Now look at Genesis 5. Listen. This, from verse 1. He said, this is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God created he him. In whose likeness? In whose likeness? Let's follow. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. Verse 3. And Adam lived an hundred and thirty years and begat a son in his own likeness. This was after the fall. Are you following, friends? Do you understand? Are you, are you getting what I got? And Adam lived an hundred and thirty years and begat what? A son. <laughs> in his what? Not in God's likeness. Because why? The man we are talking about here, the Adam here had fallen. So everything that Adam was producing thereafter was after his own likeness. A man that is falling. A man that is unconscious. A man that has lost the knowledge or the revelation or the idea of who he is. Seth was born. Amen. Seth came out of the likeness of Adam. The fallen Adam. Not Adam, the son of God. So thereafter, because in what likeness you are born, that is that likeness, that is what you'll be following. That is how your life will pattern. When Adam was in the likeness of God, he lived like God. Seth came in the likeness of Adam that had fallen. Fear will rule over him like he's now ruling over Adam. Do you get it, friends? Do you understand? This was not the likeness of God. This is not the intention of God. This man said is a man living in ignorance because he's not even aware the possibilities that are available to him. The kind of life his father had once lived. In fact, his father cannot even testify that we were like this before because he has forgotten. 
he can't remember. That is why I was saying, a man that is suffering from um, loss, memory loss, if he was once a rich man, he can't remember. If he has a billion dollars in his account, he can't remember. It's of no use to him. He will leave a poor man and die a poor man if his, if his memory is not restored back. If he was a king's son, or even if he was a king himself, he can't remember. He has gotten to a state in which it is what you tell him. That is what he will do. That is what he will believe. If you tell him this is your father, he will believe that it is his father. Because he does not know. And that is what happened to man. When man fell, man did not even remember who he is, not to talk of who his father is. But the moment you discover who you are, you will know who your father is. Or when you know who your father is, you will know who you are. And you know what is available to you. And you know what is about Satan? When Satan takes something away from you, he won't leave you empty. He will give you something as a substitute. Are you following, friends? One of the things that man also lost was man also lost his origin. He can't remember where he came from. And that's why Satan handed over superstitions. Those of us that schooled in the southwest back then, and they tell you the origin of man. Every tribe, every race has their own theory of the origin of man, isn't it? In Yoruba land, they would, when we were in primary school, they told us that man originated from Ilefe. The first time I visited Ilefe, apologies to people that are from Ilefe here. I was embarrassed. I said, I can't imagine that this is where I. How can somebody say this is where I came from? He can't be. Satan had to give a substitute because he realized that the moment you know where you came from, there will be a desire to return. Not just that, you will also want to know, you also want to be a partaker of the benefit of that place. It's important where you came from. <laughs> Satan knows how important it is. That is why he gave a substitute. And he raised up a man called Charles Darwin. Inspired him. And now postulated the theory. That man came from animals, from apes. God said you are fearfully and wonderfully. Look at yourselves tonight. Look at your brother, look at your sister. Look at yourselves. As wonderfully as you are sitting there, and somebody said you are from apes. Since I was born, upon all the history I've read, at least there has been recorded history now of about 6,000 years, frog had not become fish. Monkey had not turned to humans. Human had not turned to something else. And somebody said, we are from what? It's, because, it's ignorance. And Satan added and handed over superstitions to man because he knows that the day you realize where you came from, you have a power over him. But I'm glad tonight that we know where we came from. We are not from Ife. We are not from Jerusalem. We are not from India. I'm talking about physical, earthly Jerusalem. Because some of, they told us, they said Yoruba originated from where? Some, some said Sudan, some said Egypt, some said Saudi Arabia. We came from Zion. The city of the most high God. We are not from apes. We are not from animals. We came from God. And we are going back to God. Listen. When the evening comes, every animal will go back to where they come from. <laughs> evening time is coming. Everybody will go back to where they came from. Where are you from? You know, when you look at look at <clears throat> propaganda has power. Look at Americans. I think those guys are very smart. They've they've cultured their people's thinking and the thinking of the world to behave to believe in some certain things. There is this belief that when an American is held hostage anywhere in the world, America would deploy all his resources to rescue that person. Whether true or false, that is what the world believes. 
But it's not every time that they rescue people like that. How many people have, been, have, they, have they rescued? Some, they even said they want to go and kill themselves. Are we following friends? That is a belief. They establish it, they, they make it, they write it in books, you read stories, they did movies about it, and people came to believe it. And an American will be in trouble somewhere, it will relax. All he will be buying for is that, don't just, if I can just live for another few days, help will come. That is belief. Because that is what has been registered into them. Are you following friends? Because he knows, he will tell you, I am an American. How much more confidence he should give to us when we know that we are Christians, we are sons and daughters of the Most High God, and we are on this earth as ambassadors of Christ. And the all power in heaven is behind us, knowing that wherever we find ourselves, heaven will not rest until they send help. It's ignorance that makes us to panic in the face of danger. The ambassador of a nation to another nation does not depend on the resources of the host nation. <laughs> the security of the host nation, they don't depend on it. They bring their security. One of my, 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 one of my, my, brother, one of my brothers had a colleague whose wife worked with the American embassy. He said the fuel that they use, the petrol that they use, is not Nigerian petrol. They bring their own petrol. Even their staff also take part. He said, their, own, their own petrol doesn't get exhausted easily. And they also get it at a cheaper rate than what you get. All their resources, they bring everything they need, they will bring it from their mother country. If they need paper, they won't go to Idumat and go and buy paper. Say, go to computer village, go buy paper. We need paper. No way. Where will it come from? They will ship it down. Listen. Stop looking to this health for your survivor. And that is why they will tell you that the economy is bad. If they say economy is bad in Nigeria, do you think the Americans that are living here, the border, the ambassador of America, do you think he cares whether your economy is bad or not? He doesn't care. He will just live the way he's supposed to live here. And when his time expires, he goes back home. They send another person. And that is how we are supposed to live. Knowing fully well that he that has brought us here is taking care of us and he will continue to take care of us. You are no longer your own responsibility. You are God's responsibility. Are you following friends? But man had lost this consciousness. After the fall. Are we following friends? Amen. Now. Let's, let's finish that place. I see some, one or two things that I would like us to touch before we close tonight. Now listen. He said now Adam. Now what Adam was in God. Christ has redeemed us back to that. Now a redeemer. To redeem anything. Is to bring you back. To his origin again. To do what? You are not following. To bring it back to where? Its origin again. Now listen. And Adam never had to be sick. (laughs) Remember? Redemption is not partial. It's total and complete. (laughs) He never had to die. He never had a worry. Some of us, we can worry for the world. He said, oh, he said, I'm a deep thinker. I just, I like to think ahead. I like to think, think, think. They've crossed several bridges without getting to the bridge. And do you realize that most of the things you're actually afraid of, you think most of them don't even happen. <laughs> oh God. He never had a headache. He never had fear. When Adam was in the image of God, he didn't have what? 
But when he fell, fear came in. By the way, what was the response of God when God, Adam told God, he said, I'm afraid. And I was naked and I want to hide myself. God knew that that was not normal. Isn't it? Let, 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 Genesis 3. Genesis 3 again. Okay, I heard a voice and I hid myself. Now, verse 11, listen on. And he said, who told thee that thou wast naked? Who preached you that sermon? It's a sermon. Because, listen, the preaching is powerful. Not only preaching. The things you hear, they have the ability of changing your thinking and changing your state and your position. That is why be careful what you listen to. He said, who preached to you? Who told you you are naked? This can happen without somebody else preaching it to you. No one apostle Paul said, Oh foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you? Is bewitchment. Are we following, friends? Because before now, if things were the way they were supposed to be, Adam had no reason of being afraid. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? And God asked him, As thou eaten of the tree, whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? God knows that that is only one answer, only one reason, where man could not start talking about nakedness and fear. Because there is no reason why man should be afraid. So if he's afraid, something had happened. The only thing that could have happened is he had done what God asked him not to do. And from that time, man began to live in ignorance. But Abraham said, he never had fear. He just climbed up in the arms of the father and just like a child, everything was ease everything. And whatever he asked, why? He just got it. Whatever. If Brother Ram said, whatever he has, he asked, he got it. Isn't that what Jesus told us? If you abide in me, and my word abide in you, then you shall ask what you will, and he shall what? So all Adam needs to do is to ask. And whatever he asked, why? He just got it. Everything obeyed him. Because he was God's child. And the child is heir of all things. Adam had that understanding, that revelation that he was what? He was a child of God. Seth had a different understanding. Seth had the understanding that he was the son of Adam. Thereafter, everybody became the sons of their fathers. And they inherited the weaknesses of their fathers. They inherited the failures of their fathers. All the generational problems of their fathers became theirs. Because now, they are in the likeness of their fathers. Now, Abraham said, now when man fell, he lost this. And now what he lost in the fall, Christ has come as a redeemer. Did you ever come, did you ever stop to think what Christ redeemed us for? It's a question. He gave us everlasting life. He brought us back to the eternal fellowship. Hallelujah. What happened initially? Fellowship, friendship was cut off. The access to life was cut off. But what happened now? He has restored us back to the eternal fellowship and relationship to God to be his sons and daughters again to restore back all that Adam lost in the fall. Listen friends, 
Whether you believe it or not, whether you agree with it or not, we have been restored back. Don't worry, we're still coming there. Now, the thing of it is, since he has restored man back to this place, man in the fall has lost his conscience of what the Father put him here on earth to do. The purpose for which he was placed here. Listen, friends, the purpose of your redemption is not just to come to church and sing only believe and sing and pray and dance in church and just go home like that. No! You are here to be, oh God, to, to, to exercise dominion. You are here to rule. You are here to manifest, exercise your sonship. Situations will come up that will challenge God in your life. Situations will come up that want to defy the grace of God in your life. It is that time you must manifest that which has been inside of you because that is what you are raised up for. Listen, you are not life is not a bed of roses, that is correct. Nevertheless, God has given us everything that we need to reign and to rule in life. To reign over circumstance, to reign over situation, to bring circumstance under control. I don't care what that circumstance is. We read it last week. But Abraham said, if that problem is not meant for you to be dominated, God will not bring it to you. He brought it to you because what you need and what you need to rule over it is already in you. He lost the consciousness of what he was here to do. We are not just here to come and marry and give birth to children, go to school, make money. All those things are good. They are secondary assignments. <laughs> you know when we are doing youth service? There is primary assignment. There is primary assignment. They will now post you to your place of what? Anything outside of that primary assignment is secondary. Some of us, we are posted to Kenny to go and be... I was posted to Nepal Transmission. To be reading, Kenny to be monitoring meters, changing this, changing that. That's where I was posted to. But once I close, I have secondary assignment. I teach students to make money. We call it secondary. Secondary assignment. NYC will not, will not rate me based on secondary assignment. If I run away, if they come to the place of my father's assignment and they don't meet me there, there will be trouble. They said, oh, one day one of them came. One of the NYC officials came. And they were like, where are the guys? Where are they? they were looking for some of us. Me, I've closed and gone home to eat and sleep and prepare for my secondary assignment. Preparing for secondary assignment. When primary was still on. That's how some of us behave. We focus so much on secondary things. No wonder Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Primary assignment. You know, sometimes when, they, when that scripture is being quoted, they don't quote it fully. And that's why some of us, we are afraid. They say, ah, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all the other things will be around. What if he doesn't have it? You are afraid whether God will have it or not. Jesus said, he said, for your father knows that those secondary things, you have need of it, so it will be added automatically. But first of all, one thing needful, seek ye first the kingdom. You love the Lord tonight? You love the Lord tonight? <laughs> oh God, help us. Uh, we've not gone far. Because I still have one long, lengthy read to do. And we are still, we are almost 7.30. Now, the thing of it is, he has restored man back to the place where man fell. Okay, we've read that. He said, in other words, all of the plumbing, as it was in our brain and the outlets, the faith has been clogged up with business affair. We were, we, I'm going to watch in church last Sunday evening. When the preacher was talking about, um, what's it called, tax masters of Egypt. <laughs> we, we, we are here again. These are legitimate things of life. But they should not clog us up. <clears throat> are you following? Jesus talked about, um, when he was preaching about um, 
the sower went to sow. He talked about the seed that fell among thorns. No, I'm not talking about the rocky blade. The one that fell among thorns. He said, the cares of life. Those cares of life, they are legitimate things. You think it's worldliness? No. I want to eat. My children must survive. They must go to Kenya. Must... We begin to also. Especially in this Lagos. Somebody came to the house the other day. She came to do something in Lagos. She was in our house for a while. And she said, ah. I thought they said by 4 a.m. People start jumping out. Ah. I said, God has delivered us. Well, to eight or is it seven thirty? That was when I said I was not taking my wife to work. Said, you know, people don't jump at that four. I thought we jump at that four a.m. Ah, I said, I said, do you know since when I've been praying that God should deliver me from that spirit of Lagos? Jump at one day I was coming from. I was coming from Ghana, not Ghana. I think I was coming from. Um, we passed through Ghana, so it was this early morning. We left Ghana. I think in the night. So we got to that area, that um, after Badagri, coming to I think Agbara area. Around 3 a.m., people were at the bus stop waiting for transport to my two to Oshodi. 3 a.m. going to work. I said, what time did this man get home? That he had to jump up this early again. No wonder people people don't live long. If you are doing that kind of a job, pray for deliverance. Yes. I tell you the truth. It's not a good way to live life. 3 a.m. 3 a.m. So tell me if that kind of person we ca- what time will he have to pray before he leave home in the morning? Pray care. Man just say, Father, I'm on my way today. Help me. Just give me the Jump because if he st- if he delays five minutes later, he might not get to work on time. But that's not the plan of God for us. What did I say? That is not the will of God for us. You believe that? Say amen. That is why when you are praying for job, tell God the kind of job that you want. A job that will give you room to serve God. Those see there are jobs, there are jobs, and there are jobs. Who? What did I say? Job that will give you peace of mind, not jobs that will job you first, drain your blood. The money will not use it of servicing your body. May God be our help. Has <laughs> hey. been clogged up with business affair, with home life, domestic things. It all becomes so clogged up. With that, until God can operate through those channels that He had made man for. And God is speaking. We can hear Him. Somebody said, I've never heard God speak. How will you hear God? Speak? It's because your channels have been clogged up. But if those channels can only be true, you know, in, your, in our homes, in our homes, I know it's the kitchen that usually have that problem when it gets to a point, when it's clogged up with oil. And water is not flowing again. You need to call the plumber to throw it. Isn't it? So that the plumbing system, the water is coming in, it will be normal again. That is how it is. See, God still speaks. Say amen. You can still see God. But Abraham said, the reason why we don't see angels again it's because we don't talk about angels. Our mouth has been clogged up with other things. Some is politics. Once you start talking about politics, every of their nerves and senses will go up, come up. They know all the details about PDP and APC and Abga. That is when you see them in action. Some is sports. All the Arsenal fans and the Man U fans and the Tottenham fans. Once they begin to talk, you are talking about a man that is doing, make, oh God. And you, oh, may God have mercy. He said, but when we begin to talk about God, Cleopas and his friend, 
Even though they were depressed, they were still talking about Jesus. Oh, when you talk about Jesus, it will show up. When you talk about Jesus, there will be miracles. The only person you can talk about that won't get offended is Jesus. Don't even talk about each other. Some of you, your preoccupation is talking about others. The moment you sit down like this, even when they begin to chat, it's talking about others. They don't have any joy until they're talking about others. And oftentimes, it's talking about them by evil. It's, yeah, it's little minds. Talk about all the time. Talk about, that's what gives them joy. You need help. You are living in ignorance. But Abraham said, if you know who God is, you can find out in the someone who is God, and you know that the brother or the sister sitting next to you is a child of God. He said, and you know, and you are sick in the body, you could ask that person to pray for you, knowing that that person is a child of God, God will honor that person's prayer. But if you have not come to the realization of who you are yourself, you can't have the right discernment of who the next person is. And that's how we should change ourselves. We look down upon each other. Out of ignorance, your rating of others is by the kind of clothes they wear to church. See, so that sister wear designers. That brother wear designers. I will be their friend. And you look at the other one, his shoe has chopped. And his trousers faded. And that sister, is it? Maybe that sister just has two or three clothes that he, he, she, or she recycles throughout the year. It has not been revealed to you that that person needs help. But it has been revealed to you to talk back about that sister that we have only three clothes throughout the year. Is Satan dwelling in you? You are living in ignorance. I'm not talking about these are things that people do. If you could know that somebody has a need, it is God revealing to you that that person has a need. You couldn't help the person. But the only thing you can do is talk bad about the person. So when they are not saying somebody needs help, you want to pray, you need, you need prayers. You can't go and meet that person because you feel that the person is below your class. Class, you below your class. There's no class here. Listen, no class. Class, that class is only in your mind. Let me tell you something. God will put you in a state. If you're a child of God, though, if you are not, God doesn't bother about you. But if you're a child of God, God will put you in a position to humble you. I keep telling people, it's today that you know you don't know tomorrow. The person you are looking upon, you are looking down on today. Hey, 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 tomorrow, tomorrow is pregnant. And that's what some of us we begin to we begin to do when it's time for our children to marry. You say, no, you can't marry for you can't marry that person, that family, that that that, that, that low, low life family. You now begin to do matchmaking. I'm not saying you are doing it here. So people are listening on the tapes. Everybody has got to hear it. Tia, who is he getting married to? Tia. Ah, he's um, he's the so -so person from so -so church. Ah, the father, the father of that girl, they, he works in he works in shell. Say, ah, that's very good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shell will shell you. What did I say? Shell will come to an end one day. I see people work in shell and they are out of job. See people work in bank, they are out of jobs. In fact, the initial shock that happened to them when they lost the job. So they are struck immediately first. Listen, you need to choose by faith and not by sight. You need to live by faith and not by sight. The reason why you live by sight is because you are living in ignorance. You don't know who God is. So you want to make your choice of who to marry. Does he have a car? Where does he live? He lives in Moshe. This other brother lives in Lekki. He's a Lekki brother. You don't know whether he's squatting in Lekki. The car is driving. You don't know whether he's loaned it. But even if he's the owner, 
Times changes, things changes. Listen, choose by faith. Oh, let God be the one that will guide your choice. And you will never miss it. If you choose otherwise, or you're for you. Excuse that expression. Are you happy with the Lord tonight? Please permit me to just read one more. Then we'll close. I want to read from who is God? No. That who is God will take time. Now, remember, but Abraham said, Where we read earlier, where he was saying that man lost his relationship, his friendship, and his fellowship with God, and um, um, and because he lost that, he lost also the consciousness of who he is. But the intention of God is not for man to be like that forever. So God made a God has already made a plan, an advanced plan, to restore man back to where he fled from. Now listen, but Abraham said. Remember in the sermon, Christ is the mystery of God revealed. But Abraham said, God had threefold mystery purpose. The first one is, God wants to reveal himself to his people. Now, revelation knocks out ignorance. Say amen. amen. Revelation brings you, you know, ignorance is lack of knowledge, lack of information, and being unaware. But revelation brings you into knowledge. Revelation makes you brings you to realization. Revelation makes you to be aware. Are you following? Because until you are aware, you will continue to live the way you are living. The Bible talked about the prodigal son. He said, and when he came to himself, everybody had to come to that point. When we come to ourselves, a self-realization. Something will strike you like what? Like a man that has lost his mind or his senses, and one day his memory comes back to him. Say, hey, what am I doing here? He would think probably he was sleeping. He might have lived 20 years in that state. He won't know. And he said, ah, but I was going, to, I was actually traveling to so so place. Then I remember there was a noise, something happened, and everything was blank. Okay, what day was that? That was June, maybe 1994. What is today's date? Today is November 3rd, 2011. What? He has come to himself. I, I remember where I am now. My name is Jones. Simply Jones. I say, I, I'm a rich man now. I, where is this place? Ah, this is Mushio. Ah, what am I doing in Mushio? When I have a house in. Because why? What he lost had come back. Are you following, friends? Same thing happened to us as Christians. And every Christian must come to that realization that you are a child of God. You have no business being a sinner. You have no business being sick because God is your father and God is a healer and he can heal all manner of diseases. You have a no business being poor because God is a provider and he has promised that he will provide every need. So, Brother Abraham said, God wants to reveal himself to his people. Listen, it's only his people. Not to everybody. God loves to, he wants to do what? He wants to reveal himself to his people. You and I. Because that revelation will give us a realization Amen. of who we are and who our father is. Amen. When man fell in the garden, man lost the realization of who his father is. That was why Satan gave them three gods. Some, he gave them many, plenty gods. Amadio Adedia, Ogun Dedia, Shango Dedia, everything Dedia, different gods. They said in Egypt, in ancient Egypt, 
one of the reasons why they used to criticize the Hebrews is because they feel that they are poor because their God is one. He said, your God is one, you are poor. You can't afford to make different sacrifices to different gods. He said, we are rich because we have many gods and we can choose the different... We can, and they are always celebrating something. Remember Solomon? Solomon had a thousand seven hundred wives. And the Bible said he built temples, shrines for each of the wives, altars for them, and every, every one of them was always having a celebration and he will always go with each one. So 700 days of the 700 wives. So that man has no other business to do anything. The Bible said his heart is he married 10 wives who took his heart away from the Lord. So two years of his life continuously like that. All he will be attending is celebration, even if just for one day. That is why the Bible, Brother Abraham said, under no circumstance, <laughs> under no circumstance, under no should marry, say it again, under this children, wake up, oh. this is time for you to start hearing these things, so that it will stay with you. Wake up! Um, is it Theophilus or Japheth? No, no. Theophilus. Cornelius. Cornelius, right? Cornelius. Okay. God bless you. This is Japheth. Oh, yeah. are, you, are you hearing me? Under no circumstance should a believer marry a non believer. Babram said the person you marry shows your ambition, it also shows the kind of person that you are. Say amen. amen. Say amen. amen. <laughs> May God help us. Ah, it is well. So, God <laughs> wants to reveal himself to his people and the second one is God wants to have preeminence. It is the people that he reveal himself to. It is in the life of those people that he will have preeminence and when he has had preeminence he will be able to restore back the lost Eden then they can have power like Adam had power they can have authority like Adam had authority and they can rule and reign like Adam did because why God has revealed himself to them and they now, God is now having preeminence in their lives because why their fellowship friendship and relationship with God has been restored. Do you understand, friends? Now, in closing, I'm going to read this and we'll close. Sorry for taking your time. The new birth is Christ. He said, it's a revelation. God has revealed to you this great mystery. And that's a new birth. Now, what are you going to do when you all get that group together? Where the revelation is perfectly in harmony. We are still going to bring this back to Ephesians 4 where we read. Where I'm reading from Christ is the ministry of God revealed. We will, we will read who is God some other time. That one is lengthier. And will take us into something else. Now, I'll read it again. He said, the new bed is Christ. It's a revelation. God has revealed to you this great mystery. And that's a new birth. Now, what are you going to do when you get all that group together? Where the revelation is perfectly in harmony and God expressing it through his word by the same actions, the same things that he did, making the word manifest. He said, oh, if the church only knew his position, it will one day. Did you get that? But Abraham said, oh, if the church could only know his position, and he said, but it will one... Listen, one day the church will know his position. Listen, we know our position. Our position has been revealed to us. What we need to do daily is to walk in the consciousness. What did I say? He said, it will one day then the rapture will go when it knows what it is. 
Do you get that, friends? The Bible said, I think that should be Daniel 11, 32. He said, the, the B part of it, he said, and they that know their God. Listen. And they that know their God shall be strong. Knowledge or revelation brings strength. And when they are strong, they will what? Do exploit. Without revelation, you are weak. Without revelation, you are ignorant. Without revelation, you are a victim. Satan will kick you around anyhow. Without revelation, you will suffer. But let me tell you something. Once revelation comes, revelation is your prevailing power. Prevailing power over sin. Listen, you are still living anyhow because revelation is yet to come. When it's been revealed to you who you are, you know you are not of this world. Mm-hmm. But you are from heaven above. Listen, it will change your outlook of life. It will change your behavior. When the prodigal son came to that realization, he changed everything about him. He said, what am I doing here? My father has servants. He has slaves. They eat well. Even if I cannot be a son again, I have sinned against him. I have sinned against heaven. I will go back to him and say, Father, forgive me. I'm not worthy to be called your son again. Just make me like one of your hired servants. Because he knows, as an hired servant, he will eat well and he will get paid. What he was not aware of is that once a son, always a son, the father's perception does not change. And the father seeing him afar off because the father has a perfect understanding of the relationship between himself and his son. He was the one that saw him afar off. He got up from where he was. He was not a kind of friend that said, that idiot is coming. After waiting my resources. He will call me. I will show him. I will speak my mind to him. No! He got up and ran to him and hugged him and kissed him and said, my son. Not my servant. My son, this my son was lost. He's found. He was dead. Now he's alive. Kill the father's calf. The father's perception does not change at any time. It remains the same. It's constant throughout. Same thing with our father's perception. Concerning us, it has never changed. God has never had a new thought about us. His thinking about us has never changed. Is still the same. He sees us as a son. He sees us. He sees you as a daughter. Listen. One day you will enter that level you are supposed to enter into, and you will have everything under control. Listen. Let it be tonight. Let that revelation strike you that you are a son of God. You are a daughter of God. You are not supposed to be a victim, kicked around by the devil, by circumstance, by situation, by problems of life. Oh, I was supposed to say, I thank God. Who always causes me to triumph. Hallelujah. Always. Not sometimes. Then you know you are not a goat. Hello. I think somebody wants to use an example here. He said, if you go to a place and you are passing a field, you are hungry. Maybe you're not eating three days. You are very hungry. And you see goats eating grass. And they can talk and say, Ah! Bro Jones, you're looking like somebody that's hungry. Come! This is food. Good food. See grass. See how grass green. Will you go and join them? Why? Why? The Bible said, My son, if sinners entice thee, consent because you are not a goat. The reason why you consent is because you think you are a goat. When you see cattle or pigs enjoying, have you seen pigs when they are eating? You see that they are tail, they'll be doing like this. It means they are enjoying the food. But you are not a goat. 
you are not a pig. You are not a cattle. You are a son of God. You are a daughter of God. Let us live likewise. You love the Lord tonight? Let's rest on our feet. God has given us everything we need in life and godliness. Are you following, friends? He said, for this same purpose was the Son of Man made manifest that you might do what? Say it again. Do you believe that? That that was the reason why Christ was made manifest? That he might do what? And we are the continuation of the ministry of the Son of Man. Of the Son of God. We are what? Do you believe you are the continuation? So what is the purpose of your manifestation? Ah, you are not sure. What is your purpose? So wherever you see the work of the devil, we should not be like that policeman. I think I've used that example several times. Imagine a policeman that sees people, somebody stealing, or somebody doing evil, and say, ah, let me go and run to the IG. Take permission from the IG. I see somebody buckling another person. Should I arrest him? That man, not only withdraw his gun, Pastor. His uniform is supposed to be taken away and supposed to be locked up as an accessory to crime. Because he saw crime, is commissioned to stop crime and he couldn't do it. May, not be, may that not be our portion. Wherever we see the manifestation of these works of Satan, what do we do? We stop it. We should get to that point, friends, where when demons see us, they will cry out like they cried when they saw Jesus. I said, Have you come to destroy us before our time? Not running from witches and wizards. Things that are supposed to run from you, you are running from them, is ignorance. Why not talk to the Lord tonight? You know the way the Lord has ministered to you tonight. You know what your own needs are. You know where you are trusting the Lord. Why not speak to Him tonight? If that connection between you and God has not been restored, you can talk to the Lord tonight and say, Lord, I want that friendship restored. I want that fellowship restored. I want that relationship restored. Because when it's restored, ignorance cannot stand where revelation is. Death cannot stand where life is. Listen, friends. The Bible says, sin shall not have dominion over us. Then you don't live your life like a victim. You will live like a victorious son and a victorious daughter of God. Knowing that Christ has conquered the world for us. He said in this life, you shall have tribulation. But he didn't stop there. He said, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. He said, now are we the sons of God. Now, now, not tomorrow. Now are we sons. Now. Right now, we are sons of God. And sons rule. By the spoken word. Because that is how God himself operates. We might have been born in the likeness of Adam. But listen, we have been restored back into the likeness of God. To the beginning before the fall before we lost our consciousness now we know where we came from 
we know why we are here and we know where we are going back to what is that situation in your life tonight God has given you authority to bring it under subjection what is that challenge that has buffeted you all this while that has made his boast against you like Goliath boasted one time 40 days and 40 nights against the children of Israel but because they were in ignorance they went to hide themselves out of fear but a man that has caught the revelation of who he is and what God had made him that man had a proper understanding but Abraham said David knew that God had blessed him and he knew that God was with him he wasn't afraid of the threats and the boast of Goliath listen I don't know what the doctor has said concerning you wherever you are tonight listening if you are listening on the tape I don't know the pronouncement of the doctor concerning you but I know one thing that is superior because he's the absolute he has the final word he has the final say he said I'm the Lord that heals all your diseases all, all without anyone left behind I'm the Lord that heals all that same God is still here tonight that same God will heal you wherever you are they may tell you that oh what is happening to you is, is, is associated with old age is the age in which you are is a lie of the devil I didn't read that from my scripture you have a right to live a healthy life you have a right to live a sickness free life it's your right and your privilege are you in debt tonight are there projects that you have a backed upon and funding is denying you progress. Oh, our father is rich in houses and land. He holds all the wealth of this world in his hand. Of rubies and diamonds. Of silver and gold. His coffers are full. He has riches untold. You can ask. But Abraham said, all Adam needed to do was to ask of the father. Oh, ask tonight. Say, ask abundantly that your joy may be full. Listen. Do you have loved ones that are not saved tonight? Children that are gone wayward? Oh, glory to God. We have a sure word of promise. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. That word makes it nearly impossible for a loved one to be lost. The New Testament covenant is thou shall be saved. Thou and thy house. But Abraham said all you need to do is apply the token on behalf of your household. When Rehab, the alot applied that token over our soul. Everyone that was in that house, every one of them, if everyone that she invited in that came in, let it be a neighbor. Let it be the works run sinner. As long as they were inside that place, they were saved. If that could happen under the blood of goats and bulls, how much more under this perfect covenant? Listen, the scripture never miss words when it said, Thou shalt be saved down in the house. Apply the talking over with that wayward loved one. Is he your father, your mother, your sibling, your child? Your uncle, wave that talking tonight over them. Are you struggling with bad habits? Bad, sinful habits? 
You need not do that. Christ has come. Listen, Christ has come. The life of God has been restored back to the church. The light of God is shining bright to knock out every blackness, every darkness. Why do you want to keep living where you where you've been living before? Why do you want to remain bound when you can be free? The only reason why you've not received deliverance thus far is because you are worshipping that demon. But if you can only say tonight, enough is enough. Say, Lord, enough is enough. I'm tired of this way of life. I'm tired of slaving under these habits. I tell you, you will walk away free. Like that songwriter said, he said, I can still go free. You can still go free tonight. Sisters, you can still go free. Brothers, you can still go free. Your pardon has been signed. Your deliverance has been wrought. All you need to do is to come to that realization and walk away free. What is your own challenge tonight? It may not have been mentioned, but Christ is here again tonight to meet every need. You can talk to him. to God, don't just be thinking. Say something. Say, ask and you shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Ask him. I don't want to labor under ignorance. It's so dangerous. I want revelation of God in my life. I want to live as a born son and daughter of God. Lord, help me. Speak to him. Jesus Christ, we've prayed. Our gracious eternal Father, your son has labored to bring the word. And we know the word in it has life. By the speaking of your word, sicknesses are sent back. In. May that be our portion tonight. At the going forth of your word, deliverances are wrought. May we all be delivered from ignorance. Help us to live as sons under revelation. Help us to live as daughters who have revelation. And Lord, help our life to match the revelation. Lord, we pray, Father, there are many requests that have been poured into the presence of God. May they turn back to testimonies in Jesus' name. All the faith we require to receive these things, they are granted to us in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray, Lord. We know the Satan, Lord God, used to hide as an angel of light to spy our liberty. Every Satan here present to deny us of our blessing or to rob us of those benefits. We rebuke and cast them out in the name of Jesus Christ. As we'll be going to our various homes, when angels will come to visit and to, to verify that we are believers, Lord, may we never disappoint you. So that those blessings can be delivered to us in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for your son that you have used graciously. May you replenish him. May you recall him again, Lord. Oh, prepare him, Lord, so that some other times, so God, he will even deliver more in the name of Jesus Christ. And we pray for ourselves that we have heard the word. May this one never be for our condemnation, Lord, but let it be for our edification, for our glorification, for our progress and prosperity in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, Father, we pray, Lord, as we be going to our various homes tonight, may we meet those homes in perfect condition. The road that we are going to pass is sanctified by your blood. Lord, may we go safely and may we arrive smoothly. And Lord, that we are blessed behind, may we meet in perfect condition. 
where in the middle of the week, the rest of the week is in your hands. Even the journey of your children. Oh God, for those occasions already announced, may it be smooth, may it be safe, may it be for achievement of purpose desired in the name of Jesus Christ. And when the time will come, may we return back safely, Lord. Do this for us, your glory and honor. Oh, Father, we give you glory. Even our brethren who are trying to do a barrier, we pray, oh God, may you see them through. At the right time, Lord, even today, may you return them safely. Thank you because you have done it. In Jesus Christ's name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. God bless you. How many are blessed tonight? I am wonderfully blessed.